Hey there, Wranglers. How you doing? As you can see, I'm having a little bit of a hat shortage, so I'm wearing this in honor of my friend Hannah. Uh, anyway, um, today I'm talking about survival and the survival shows that you see. And I would encourage you to stay to the end of this because I'm going to give you actual survival advice from a guy who grew up in Alaska and had actual formal training in it and all this kind of stuff. Um, but like and subscribe if you dig this. But anyway, yeah, hang on kind of towards the end and I'll, I'll tell you what you really need to do in contrast to what I just watched. Now, you're not going to believe this. I turned on the, I like, I like watching just about anything on YouTube. And I turned on a guy that said, you know, survival in Alaska. And I thought, okay, well, I grew up in Alaska and I'd like to see what he's doing. Well, the first thing the guy does is um, he's going out to survive and uh, he decides he needs to build a big queen size bed hole down into the snow till he gets to the ground. Now, if any guys know anything about survival, it takes a lot of calories to do that. So he does that and he digs this hole and he cuts through the layers of snow and moves them out as blocks, which makes that sense. Finally gets down to the, the ground and then he just builds a huge fire in that in that area, in that, that big hole he built because he wanted to dry out the earth and, and uh, keep it warm. And well, it got muddy and he had to drain it and stuff, which was, that so far was interesting. And I thought, well, that's a lot of work, but it, I kind of kind of see a, I kind of see where that makes sense. I'm not sure that, you know, if you're in an actual survival situation, if that's the best thing. But he did it. He got away with it. You know, um, he and he built that fire, and it looked kind of cozy. So anyway, he gets done building his fire and uh, setting up his little bedding area, and he decides it's time for dinner. So well, to, before he finishes up his his last few things. So um, I'm not really watching it directly i'm laying on my bed and I'm, i've got it kind of tilted so i can see it and he throws something silver in the can into the into the uh not throws he just puts a silver can into or what looks to me like a silver can into the ashes he goes, oh we'll have some baked beans tonight and i go well, that's pretty smart and he's got a can of baked beans they're a little heavy but you know whatever anyway uh, then he come to find out i watched a little closer he goes yeah these are great northern beans and he pulls out a, a pack of dry beans i thought oh that's a lot smarter you know, either easier to carry and all that. And it's a pot. That was a cooking pot he had. So he opens that up and he pours in the, the baked beans and and he goes, oh, yeah, these are going to be great. So he does some more chores. Then he gets back to the baked beans. Here's where it stops being survival. The guy says, OK, we're going to need some salt and pepper. And he pulls out salt and pepper. We're going to need some ground mustard, pulls out some ground mustard. We're going to need some tomato paste, pulls out tomato paste. And he goes, we're going to need a few ham hocks, pulls out a few ham hocks, throws this all into the bean pot and is cooking it. I'm like, wait a damn minute. I'm, it's supposed to be a survival video. I'm not carrying around, you know, Gordon Ramsay's backpack here. Uh, so anyway, he makes his beans and he's talking about how great they are and how they're filling the spot. And he goes, oh, wait a minute. I want to have some bread. And I'm like, okay, he's probably got bread in his pack. He pulls out some dough which is fine you know what sourdough is in alaska used to do that they keep a big piece of dough in their backs and break off a piece as they need it well he goes breaks off some dough rolls it out he goes and we need some gorgonzola cheese so he puts a piece of gorgonzola cheese in the bread rolls it up puts it in the fire and he goes oh it'll be great in a minute you know whenever it's done cooking and he so he's sitting there eating his beans with some gorgonzola and then he makes another gorgonzola bun and eats that and I'm like, just a damn, I said, okay, this is not a survival situation. This here is basically an overnight picnic wherever he's at. Okay. So he gets all that stuff. In the morning, he gets up, he sleeps through the night and he builds a fire. He sleeps through the night, you know, tending the fire once in a while. He goes, oh, it's time for me to get up and eat breakfast and pack up and go home. I'm like, oh, okay. So he goes, I mean, I, and he goes, oh, for breakfast, he goes, for breakfast, I've got, um, ham hock bacon i've got um apple butter and we're gonna make some more bread and he goes oh this is great so he's got pulls out a thing of apple butter he's got a pack of bacon ham hock bacon and he starts cooking all this crap on you know on his old fire and he eats that and then he packs up his stuff and he goes home and i'm watching this i'm like this did not teach you shit about survival other than to go, you know, bring your entire spice cabinet with you and pack in a ton of shit, you know, for gourmet cooking and, and all this kind of stuff. That's not a survival situation. That's a picnic. That's camping. 
Okay, that's not survival. You didn't say anything about survival. And uh, so he goes on about his business, and I'm like, what the hell? That You don't call that a survival thing. You know, I'm sorry. You just don't. You don't. You don't. Here's what you need when you go to survive. If you're out in the, for a survival kit or whatever, imagine the scenario, scenario you're out hiking and uh, you get lost. Now, rule number one of survival, number one most important rule, and remember this, write it fucking down if you don't, if you, if you don't, I, no, I'm not even giving you an option, write it down. Tell someone where you're at, where you're going to be. Always do that before you leave and stay where you tell them you're going to be. Now, if you do get lost, which could happen, you uh, the first thing you do when you get lost and you realize you're lost is find some place where you can camp up a little bit and stay there, okay? You don't go wandering around the woods till they find you. You sit in one place and wait till they find you. Now, what you're going to need to survive is you're going to need three ways to make fire um, and keep them dry, matches, uh, uh, flint and steel, and uh, maybe some... Um, like dryer lint for kindling to make a fire, or not kindling for a, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, to start a fire with. Um, um, what else is, are you going to need? Get a couple of space blankets, okay? You know those silver space blankets. Get a couple of those. You can so far you can put all you can put some of these in a little like band aid kit or whatever. But let's say you get some wood matches, some uh, flint and steel. You've got. Um, a lighter maybe you know maybe even a candle that you could you could have all you know nice and packed keep them dry okay you got that maybe even some miners carbide which i'll get to you in a second um you get that together and also you're going to need a signal mirror it's just like a regular mirror with a hole in it where you can signal somebody okay um so you have these things to make fire probably going to get some fishing line you know and put in there with some hooks just there it's light it's easy to carry just in case of course, you're going to need like something like a multi-tool or a, um, uh, axe or something along those lines. I'm trying to find my multi-tool. I've got it right. In, I usually have it right in front of me. I don't see it right now. I'm not going to dig around for it. But um, you guys know what a multi-tool is. And um, so you, 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 you get all those things together. That's the kind of stuff you're going to need for survival. And maybe you're going to, hopefully you're going to carry an axe or a saw or something like that. Nothing too heavy, but something that allows you to get some wood up. And um, these are the basic things you're going to need for survival, um, you know, to build a fire, stay warm, signal somebody, whistle too. Whistles are really good. Um, if they're looking for you, you can start whistling with that whistle. That's a survival situation, you know, and where you build your camp, you're going to try to want to build it someplace where, a tr you know, the tree branches aren't going to dump snow and put your fire out. Maybe you can stay warm, maybe against a rock face and you know, you can put one of the space blankets around you and put one behind you somehow. I mean, you get some, bring some tape or, you know, a little bit of duct tape or whatever, put it up, get your fire going, and you kind of build yourself a little convection oven if possible. Um, these are the kind of things you need to do for survival, not the freaking gourmet challenge, okay? Um, so, yeah, if you ever have any questions about other techniques for survival out there in the Alaskan wilderness, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to tell you what little I do know. Oh, and the miner's carbide. If you're in a really bad situation and you can't get a fire anywhere going and all you've got around you is snow, try to, and you just got to dig out some snow, you can actually use miner's carbide, put it on the snow and light it, and you've got a flame coming up out of there, and uh, you can start building a fire that way. Building a fire on a snowbank with mi miner's carbide. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Like and subscribe. And uh, today's was more educational than anything else, but I just couldn't believe this fool. You know, that it wasn't survival. That was camping. You might as well have just checked into a hotel and or ordered room service as far as I'm concerned. Take care, Angles. I'll see you at the next roundup.